Back in 1987, Shinobi graced the arcades with this awesome action side-scrolling platformer where you got to play as Joe Musashi taking down a criminal organization, saving all the children along the way, taking down the bad guys, right? Just a year later, the Sega Master System got a port of this game, and while it was pretty cool in its own right, it did have some shortcomings and some changes. One thing of note was the transitioning between the high jump to platforms was very wonky in that version. Now, just a year later in 1989, Tengen, yes, Tengen, they released an unlicensed version of Shinobi for the NES. Very crazy stuff seeing a Sega game on an NES at the time when that same year the Sega Genesis was released. Very strange stuff indeed. You know, Tengen was in this battle with Nintendo due to Nintendo's stronghold on all the licensing and everything having to go through them to release cartridges. Atari slash Tengen, they just didn't want have nothing to do with it. They just wanted to do their own thing, produce their own cartridges, and profit. So this isn't a history lesson on that. This is going to be a review of Shinobi on the NES. We're going to do a full One Life playthrough. little commentary here and there. Explain a few things. So let's go ahead and buckle up and check it out. Okay, guys. So throughout this video, I'll drop a little commentary here and there, but this is going to be a full single life playthrough playthrough of the game. I'll talk about a few things here and there, but immediately playing this version compared to obviously the arcade port is going to be the best version looks and gameplay wise, but comparing it to the Master System version, my God, is this an ugly game? The pinkish purplish backgrounds, the pee on the ground, the little puppy monkey babies, the albino puppy monkey babies that you got to save. I don't know what the hell they are. They definitely don't look like children to me or damsels in distress. They're just weird little white tiny things. I, I don't know, but for the most part, this game is very drab looking compared to previous versions, but it does get a lot of flack, I think. A lot of people knock this port, but I, I do find it a fun and interesting game. I am by no means an expert at this game, even as you see here, with the bonus round, I kind of suck at this. I do wind up getting a little better later on and collecting the ninjutsus that you get for defeating these stages. Um, but if you don't wind up hitting a guy and he gets too close, it's it's like game over. You failed the, the bonus mission. And the way you unlock the bonus missions is the other thing that's changed between versions of the game is those little albino chimp children, whatever the hell they are. Uh, in the arcade port, you have to save all of them. In this version, you just collect them and they give you stuff. They're like, thanks, bro. Here's 10,000 points or here's some extra life. I don't know how they give you extra life. It's a video game. It's not going to be realistic, right? But you can max up your life, refill your life, uh, get additional life bars added as you play the game and you collect these little things, these little kids, whatever the hell they are. Um, but they will unlock the bonus round as well. If you collect one that says that you get the bonus round, I'm not sure if you have to get them all. Uh, typically, the game is so damn easy, you can just collect them all without any issues. You don't really have to search for them. It's just jumping between platforms uh, and just seeing them. They're just, you know, easy. You get to these bosses like this first guy, Ken O, right? I don't know what the hell. He's just standing there. He's like, he's just like, I'm too damn lazy to do a damn thing. I don't know if those are fart clouds coming out of his mouth. Fireballs, I don't know. In all the versions of the game, it kind of looks wonky, but they do float around. The nitpicky thing with this game is most of these freaking bosses, you have to be dead on with hitting them in a very specific spot. With Keno, it was like right in his eyeball. Like you, you have like three pixels worth of space to do it. And there's a couple bosses like that. It's very frustrating. And it, like I said, I'm not an expert at this game. I've just played it so damn much that I kind of know what to expect and, and see coming. But the other problem with this game is that, oh my God, there's no like invincibility after you get hit. Like you get knocked back. Like most of these guys are fine. Like they're just shooting a little bullet. You got a little puppy monkey baby right there, a little albino, grab him. Uh, some of these guys run at you. There might be one or two dudes on screen at one time. But later on, if you're not careful, and that's why I think some people get frustrated with this port is you'll get your ass pummeled by these damn freaking enemies because there's you just get knocked back a little bit. There's no invincibility. You can get stuck in a corner and just have two guys on your nuts and you're done. It's game over. 
Like, and it's ridiculous. You do not want to play through this game and die at all. You don't want to lose anything that you've got. You don't want to lose any of your power-ups. You don't want any of that to happen. You want to finish this game with one life. That's why I've played it so damn much. Is because I'm like, this game can't be that difficult. It just can't be. It's a game where you just need to take your time, kind of plan your steps out a little bit, and really look at the sprites getting drawn onto the screen. Learn how the enemies act. Most of them suck, but learn how they act, how they shoot their projectiles, that kind of thing. And then just go with the flow and, and take your time. You figure out little tricks to make sure you kill them before they get a hit off on you. Sure, I still take a bunch of hits in the game, but I still complete it with one life fairly easily for the most part. There's some very tricky bosses uh, in this game where if you don't know how to do it, you're just done. See, I failed the damn bonus mission again. But this one, we're after Black Turtle. I don't understand this level. Like, I feel like, are we in outer space or something? Are we jumping on, on clouds? I'm not sure with this this background. This almost looks like an, like an advanced Atari game. And these dudes right here, man, if, if you can get pummeled by them and just never pass them, if you don't get it down on how to attack those guys, they're definitely pieces of crap. But here we go. You see these guys a lot in the game, the ones with the shields and... You know, in previous versions, they looked a hell of a lot better. But yeah, this game, it feels like this level anyway, it feels very floaty, very strange. I'm not sure what this level is supposed to be if you're up in the clouds or something. Uh, because when you get to the boss, it's even more ridiculous. And this boss is probably one of the most difficult bosses in the game. Most of the, the rest of them are not too bad as long as you know what they do. The boss in this level, holy crap. Redonkulous to the max. Let's go ahead and get this bonus stage out the way. You know, I'm, I'm not one for scripting stuff, so I didn't really want to script this video. Just wanted to talk about it. I, I had a lot of fun playing this, even though, like I said, it's probably not the greatest game ever. But here you go, you're fighting this damn helicopter. And I'm like, I'm still not even 100% if I did this right. But if you die before getting here, and you only have the shuriken, like, you're fucked. There's no way you're gonna, you're gonna finish this stage, because with all these fools jumping out at you, like, it, with the shuriken, it takes, like, two hits to kill them. Sometimes it seems like three, it just, it just decides whenever it wants on how the hell the game's gonna function. Um, but I think you're supposed to, like, hit the front propeller there, and then boom! She blew up. She's done. So, I mean, I tried hitting it a few times. I think that's how you defeat it. I'm not sure if that's what you do or if you're just supposed to kill the guys. Um, but that's, that's the way. Make sure you don't die before you get to that stage, because if you have the shuriken, you're, you're shuriken out of luck. For real. It's just ridiculous. But, you see, the game, just, it's, it's more of the same. Over and over again, the stages are very short. So let's go ahead and, uh, play through some of this, and then if anything interesting comes up, I'll comment on it. So boom, I finally cleared a bonus stage and got a ninjutsu move. So those moves, uh, if you hold the A and B button, I believe like there's certain criteria. You have to be like powered up or something and it will blink on the screen. If you have more than one, you can press select to scroll through them. And if you hit A and B, it'll perform whatever the move is. Some of them, it'll just freeze all the guys. Uh, some it'll like shoot a bunch of Joe Musashis everywhere and he'll Musashi all over their faces and kill whoever's on screen at that time. Uh, I don't use the ninjutsus because I found whenever I have used them, I wind up screwing something up and I wind up dying or something like that. So this playthrough, I didn't bother using them at all, even though I collect a few of them. 
through the game. So as you see, you know, played a few stages here, uh, got a little better at it, you know, at least at this, the, the bonus stage thing. Uh, it's always the same pattern from what I understand. So if you get it down, it's, it's simple, I guess, but my hand-eye coordination kind of sucks and I couldn't do it at all times, but I started collecting them, getting it done, getting a little ninjutsus, didn't really use them. Uh, but there you go. That's how you get those things is by completing the bonus stages. Otherwise, you just fail and you don't get shiz. Just the way it goes. But here we go. Continuing on in the... Uh, what is this? The Mandalorian stage? I, I, I don't know. I don't remember what that guy's called. But the boss for this one... Oh my god. Like, when I first played this game, I was like, what am I supposed to do? What is this, right? You'll see in a moment what I'm talking about. But in this playthrough... I, the first part, I, I knew exactly what to do. The second part, I mean, I knew what to do too, but I just got so lucky with how I lined up, you know, the precision of my jumping. And it's it's weird. It's like I didn't intend on it. It just freaking happened. So as you see, like, you have this wall of these stupid things. You just got to blast them as quick as you can. And that's the other thing in this game. I didn't mention earlier, but in this game... Projectiles, which is your main thing. You have like a shuriken, like ninja star, whatever the hell it's called. And you can throw one at a time. Same thing with bullets, any other projectiles. One at a time until it hits the target or it leaves the screen. Other versions wasn't like that. And you're missing some uh, some of the the melee weapons and whatnot in this game. So it's, it's a very trimmed down port. But as you see here, this is what I'm talking about. Like I got lucky with my timing, I guess. Like where it almost seems like I'm an expert, but I wasn't. Like that little red dot on that fool's head... That Mandara, that was what his name was. You had you had to hit him square in that thing. And there's other times where I've played it and I couldn't hit him not once. Now, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Get, about getting pummeled. But luckily I've built up my health and haven't died. So um, that's a good thing. But you can wind up getting pummeled. Some of the stages will just drop you. And you'll have like two guys right there. And they just like, oh my god, they bend your ass over. So you have to be like quick. This game, you got to be real quick to react. Especially when the stages start. And there's enemies already everywhere. It's just it's just pretty ridiculous. And I thought after that stupid ass helicopter stage, I was gonna be done with these ninjas dropping down. But like I said, oh my god, the game is so much easier if you can just get it down and don't die. I know that sounds stupid, right? Like of course, don't die. Like if you could play the game and don't die, like you've gotten pretty good at the game, right? But if you die, just turn the game off and start over <laughs> because you don't want to lose anything that you have. If you have the shurikens through the whole game, enemies will take multiple hits to kill. I don't know how you get the gun, you know, whatever that I'm using in the game. I think after like the second stage you get it, but if you die, you don't have it anymore. So you always want to make sure you have that thing because it's like one hit for the most part and all the uh, the enemies will kill them. So this, we're going through lobster stage. We, we got to get this guy. This stage, oh my God, is is worse is worse than the final stage. This is like the stage before the final stage, I believe. And this thing, like this first part's not too bad, but these jumps, man, they are so stupid. You have to be like on the pixel ass edge of the platform in order to make it. And then there's gonna be something like, oh my God, dude, if I was off by like one pixel, I would have fallen in that hole. It's just, that's how ridiculous it is. And same thing with those guys, they can knock you back and you'll fall. More puppy monkey babies right there, let's grab them. And then right here, I remember the first time I played it, I just like kind of fell down. I was like, wait, that's not a platform, damn it. It's the P yellow pillars. That's stuff you gotta stay on. But the next stage in the lobster stage <laughs> is the jumps are even worse because there's some enemies where if you just jump jump at them head on, you're gonna fall, you're gonna get knocked back, that kind of thing. It's it's one of those games. You just have to master it and know what to do. See, like you just get dropped in the stage, boom, dude's throwing some shit at you. Like right here, you have to know, okay, jump and, and, and shoot because that fool's going to be there. And if you don't have the um, the other projectiles and you just have the shurikens, I mean, I'm pretty sure those guys are more than one hit. And you're just screwed. This game's like impossible if you die. So make sure you don't. Like right here is the worst. Like if you just jump up and you think, okay, I'm going to jump up and hit his ass in the shin, you're going to get knocked back because he's going to shoot you. You're going to get knocked back. You just have to jump at him. And be like very specific on the pixel edge that you're on. It's just, this is that kind of game. It's just ridiculous. But I had so much fun playing through this. I played through it a bunch of times in order to get good at it. I mean, 
you got to get good. You just got to keep playing. It's a very short game. Uh, less than 20 minutes. I mean, if you're really good at it, you could probably breeze through it faster than that. But for me, it was uh, somewhere around that 20 minute mark is how long it took me to get through it. So here's Lobster. This fool, man, I struggled with him the first times that I played him. It, it's another one of those you got to be right on the pixel asshole edge and hit him right in that thing on his head. Anywhere else, a little too high, a little too low, you're screwed. The hitbox is like two pixels. You got to hit it right in that pixel brown eye. Just square on. That's just the way it is. So Lobster is done. Screw that guy. Now we're on to the Masked Ninja. The final stages here. That Lobster dude, if you let him get you too close to the left side of the screen, um, you're dead. It's like, there's, it's impossible. So keep that in mind. You have to like figure that out. It's just ridiculous. Some of these bosses, if you screw up one time, you're done. It's over with. And Lobster was one of the worst ones. He's easy as long as you can get that accuracy going. So the final stages, as you see, this is just so damn easy. Crouch crawling along, shooting these fools, couple new enemies, but nothing major. Uh, these guys just go past them. That's the one thing. Learn to, to avoid unnecessary confrontations. This stage, man, with all this green and yellow going on in the background and the enemies, everything blends in like, holy crap. I got to the point playing this game where I knew these little fools were jumping from the side of the screen at my ass. And I just kept like my right eyeball focused on the upper right side of the screen and my left eyeball straight in the middle of the screen on the action that's taken place. Yes, that's the way I did it because it's just so ridiculous with how everything just bleeds into the graphics right here. You, you'll you just, you'll die if you land that wrong. I'm sure there's other ways to go about it, but there's been times I played it in that spot with those three enemies. I would fall in and boom, game over. It's just ridiculous. Right here, uh, I recommend with this guy, like try to shoot him over that barrel because there's one of them green little goblin bastards that just starts spawning and just coming at you. Um, so you want to kind of creep a little bit, get him so you don't have to deal with that stupid thing. And then when you get past it, another green dude jumps at you, hit him. And then boom, we're in it to win it. So this is the the, the final area before the boss. Uh, this is very simple too, but you could you could get pummeled like these guys with the sticks. If you just keep walking right, they'll stay to the top, but you're blocked on the bottom, so you have to go to the top. So when you know that those guys are coming, you either take it a little slower or you back off to the left so it'll come down at you, and then you just pop it. If you get the shurikens, you probably didn't make it this far. I mean, maybe you did, but it took you a lot longer. So there you go. Let that guy come at you. Shoot that fool. And those guys, you kind of get down to where you just jump up and hit them um, or jump down and hit them. Sometimes, man, I'm, I'm a little impatient and I wind up taking hits that I shouldn't take. But I, I feel pretty good so far at this point in the game with the life that I have. Um, pretty much, I think I'm maxed out. Uh, and here we go. This is the boss. He's got multiple forms. Final boss. Very simple little bastard, but he could pummel you. I actually got lucky on this one. This was almost going to be like, oh man, I got to play through everything again. But once you uh, you get that first form done, he does the stupid thing. You knock him back every time he hits you. But man, if you get stuck in one of those corners, it's a very big uh, boss area. So you normally I would try to go to the right to stay away from him. But this time I just kind of got stuck um, in that form. And then this is his final one where he's just sliding his stupid ass around. I just kept shooting at him. I'm like, I just got to get this done. So there you go. Mask Ninja complete. The end. Final score, 507,500. Nothing else. No story. No little cut scene. I guess this was before those times. Uh, you know, we didn't get no Ninja Gaiden, Gaiden action with the little cut scenes. Just in it to win it. That's it. This is what you're greeted to once you complete the game. The end. High fives all around. Screw you, play a better version of the game. Play the arcade port. This game's not too bad. I actually really enjoyed it. Very easy to kind of master. I didn't master it by any means. I just figured out how to make the game a lot easier. Taking my time, not dying, <laughs> just trudging through it, man. So very short game. Uh, Tengen, interesting seeing Sega stuff on the NES back in the day. So there's that. I'm pretty sure there's a couple other games from Sega that Tengen put out. We may have to take a look at that in the future, but hey, that was my review of Shinobi for the NES from Tengen. Unlicensed cartridge, a product of its time. I give this game two and a half albino puppy monkey babies out of five. Why not? 
Wasn't the most horrible game I've ever played. Wasn't the greatest. Just kind of in the middle. Mediocre port. Very dumbed down. But you could still have some fun with it. It was worth checking out for me. Uh, maybe you'll have some fun with it as well. But hey, let me know what you guys think down below. Really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I know this is a little bit different of content than I normally do. But you know what? Might as well try some things that are different. Do a lot of retro gaming content, but we don't talk about a lot of retro games on this channel. I kind of want to change that and mess around with certain things, see if I can come up with some different kinds of content. So let me know what you thought with this. And with that said, I will catch you guys next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. And boom. Bye.